Hello everyone, welcome to MetalNet TV. Today I'm thrilled to be having a conversation with two members of the band Headless, who also play with Jeff Tate's band. They're going to be touring with Jeff Tate later this year for the Empire 30th Anniversary Tour. Before we talk to Walter and Dario, I just want to remind you to subscribe to MetalNet TV and to share this channel and this interview or any other one that you like with your friends and family. Here we go. Hi guys, welcome to MetalNet TV. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to have you on. So, uh, Walter, uh, identify yourself. Hello. You know, you're Walter. Okay. So, you're Walter Chinchuse. Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> and you are Dario Parente. Hi, everybody. Okay. And I said I didn't butcher either of those. No. Perfect pronunciation, Perfect. by the way. That's amazing. <laughs> well, welcome. I'm so glad to have you on. So you are oh, you are in the band. Oh great. Um so you're in the band Headless, and we're gonna talk about that today. But you also both play in Jeff Tate's band, which we'll also talk yeah. about. Yes. But I'd love to start by getting to know you um both as musicians. Mm -hmm. And one thing that you both shared on your Headless website was that both of you both loved the band Headbangers Ball. Um, not the band, I'm sorry, the show Headbangers Ball, which I think was important to so many of us. Um, tell me about uh, when you were watching Headbangers Ball in Italy. First of all, when was it on? What time was the show on when you were watching it as a kid? Probably it was in the afternoon. Yeah, uh, in the afternoon, but uh, you know, the, the, the new episode, every time they, they air the new episode, it was very late at night. So oh. I, I remember vividly that I was waiting <laughs> hours and hours and uh, I was very young at the time. So uh, there was also a curfew, some sort of curfew in my house <laughs> to go to bed. And so my father, you know, entered my room, go to bed, it's late. And, and instead I was waiting for the Ed Bangers Bowl show. <laughs> I remember at Banks of Bull in the afternoon, probably because uh, it was uh, uh, some kind of uh, second episode. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, at probably. least in Italy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was a great time uh, yeah. growing up during the late '80s and the '90s. It was uh, the sp the special moment for heavy metal, and uh, at Banks Bull represented this particular frame of time that we. That we love, yeah, of course, to this day. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I also remember that I discovered some bands, some interesting stuff by watching the episodes. Yeah, I you're remember. lucky that it was on in the afternoon. We had to wait. I think you're indicating as well. It was on at midnight here, so it was the yeah. same thing. We would stay up really yeah. late to watch it. Our parents would try to get us to go to bed, and sometimes. <laughs> stay up late anyway and kind of get in trouble to watch it so it sounds like it maybe re-aired again in the afternoon yeah, so yeah probably it was re-aired in the probably. afternoon yeah. the day after probably <laughs> i don't know yeah i remember the um, the music of the introduction it was a, a, a song called chromatic death yeah. by anthrax yeah really? yeah 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 it was great <laughs> yeah <laughs> what were some of the bands that you gravitated to when you first started watching headbangers ball yeah, probably we were uh, into Queen's Rike. Queen's Rike at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was uh, already the time for uh, Queen's Rike and um, uh, yeah, probably also Iron Maiden. Yeah. Iron Maiden. Uh, I was very much into Megadeth at the time. So um, I remember uh, probably I've seen the, the first, uh, for the first, First time the, the video for Symphony of Destruction on Ed Banger's book. Yeah. So that was the time, more or yeah. less. Um, for a lot of musicians, it is around approximately around the age 12 when they start um, listening to rock or metal music and they hear it, they love it, and then they go out and let's say buy a guitar, or a drum kit or whatever is and start playing in bands. Was that approximately the age or time when you got into music and started playing music, or did you get into music earlier than that? Earlier, earlier, yeah, yeah. earlier. Or how old were you? Forty-three. Forty-three. <laughs> now, now, how old were you when, yeah. you, got, when you first really got into yeah. music? Yeah, we started. I think Walter was eight years old, and yeah, uh, was me, years I old. was nine years old. I even attended a show of Walter when he was a little kid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I remember my father. My father uh, tried to convince me to play uh, rock guitar because uh, he, he's he's a great fan of, of the Rolling Stones, 
and uh, he tried to convince me, why don't you play guitar? Uh, we got this teacher here, you, you can gravitate around him and uh, learn something. And uh, I was um, very uh, skeptical. <laughs> skeptical at the beginning. Uh, so after a while, he decided to uh, propose me something else. And in, in that moment, I realized I want to play guitar now. <laughs> <laughs> so I started playing Chuck Berry because it was um, probably uh, very, very attractive at the beginning for me, the, the, the rock and roll of the roots. And uh, yeah, we played some shows around town. Uh, I was eight and the other guys were 10 and nine probably. And uh, Dario was attending one of these shows. Yeah, yeah well, I was there <laughs> and uh, I wanted to join the band. <laughs> <laughs> so you've known each other pretty much your whole lives? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. We, we always play together. And uh, I think that this is, uh, you know, the special spark that we have between ourselves because we always uh, play together. So we know each other very well. And uh, usually it's uh, better with four hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I always say it's like playing one guitar with four hands. <laughs> you, need, you need two of us to make a proper play. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, was your, was your father a musician? Or was it more than... No, I was music? just a fanatic of rock music. Oh, okay. Especially of the Rolling Stones. Oh, okay. How about you, Daria? How did you um, come to pick up guitar? Oh, yeah. Um, when I was a kid, I, I all, I've always been into rock music because um, uh, I had cousins of mine that were older than me. So they started to bring stuff uh, to my attention. Uh, I started off with pop music when I was very, very young. At the time in, in Europe, uh, there was a band. I don't know if you know the band, but I think so. Duran Duran, they were very mm -hmm. popular. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and, um, but then I started to, to receive um, uh, albums from the likes of uh, Dire Straits and Pink Floyd. And so I started to be interested in rock music and uh, I wanted to play drums at the beginning uh, because maybe it was <laughs> you know because of the noise <laughs> produced by the instrument but then I uh, my, my parents suggest me to uh, start with a guitar and I started taking guitar classical guitar lessons when I was nine years old but I wanted to uh, try to, to play the electric guitar and uh, and I did it, I did it, and um, you know after that uh, we we started playing together and playing in different bands, mm -hmm. and uh, finally we we met and uh, decided to 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 make our band basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Walter, you started Headless. Um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. You started Headless in 1996 with your cousin, and it was a different lineup than the current lineup, yes, yes. which we'll talk about in a little while. Dario, you were, my understanding is you weren't in that lineup, right? You joined in 2011, correct? No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so let's straighten that out. So in 1996, you started uh, yes. Headless, right? In 1996, Headless were uh, myself, my cousin at the drums, uh, playing drums, and uh, another guitar player, um mainly i was the lead singer the bass player and the guitar player so it was um <laughs> just an experiment at the beginning and uh, then we 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 tried to evolve in the in, in 1998 probably yeah. um i met dario uh, we started to play uh, together and uh, we, were we realized that uh, th there was a chance to do something something better together. So there is a, an album from the 90s, uh, it's called Inside You, I think it's 1998. 1998, 90. yeah. And, and it's the first Atlas album with Dario on guitar. Wow. 
uh, but, but still, I was the lead singer, and that's probably the reason uh, um, why it didn't work at <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, we were just kids, really. Uh, the beginning of Atlas for me as a, as a professional uh, project uh, is uh, probably around uh, 2011. Yeah. Okay. So, so in those early years, you were playing around, writing different songs, working with different musicians, figuring out what worked and what didn't. And this 2011, when you came together seriously, yeah, decided exactly. yeah. we're gonna do this. It's gonna be. It's still gonna be called Headless. Yeah, yeah. And so, what changed? What what decisions did you make in 2011 going forward that made Headless the Headless it is today? Yeah, yeah. we spent basically uh, ten years trying to learn how to play our instruments properly. <laughs> we studied a lot and decided to to be professional, and um, we even have a. Uh, run a company together, a little company together, which is a, is, is a school of music. We mm -hmm. teach uh, guitar together. And uh, so we, we, we started to uh, fantasize, dream, dreaming about uh, building again the band. And, um, and so we uh, made some sort of a list with our best favorite musicians, uh, especially vocalists, mm -hmm. to, to, to work with. And uh, we made a demo in uh, 2011 and uh, trying to get in touch with Joran uh, Edman, which was uh, the, the vocalist for Ingrid Malmsteen during the 90s. It was the Fire and Ice and Eclipse era of Hingui. And uh, he said yes, basically. Uh, uh, we tried to make a very professional demo. It was very well recorded and uh, mixed. It was almost a final product without the, the vocal line. And uh, perhaps he's been, uh, he, he, was, he was fascinated by the fact that it was hard rock, but with a progressive twist to it, mm -hmm. because he's uh, basically he's a huge fan of progressive rock music and mm -hmm. uh, he's not very much into the, heavy metal um, style nowadays. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a, also a little surprise for uh, our uh, uh, fans. We yeah. were at the very beginning of the project, so there were very few fans. But uh, the surprise was that um, playing drums with us uh, on, the comeback on, album. on the comeback album, there was Scott Rockenfield from Queensryche. Mm -hmm. So the lineup of the, the, the comeback album was bombastic, <laughs> really. it was really something, something strange, especially for uh, the people who met us uh, in, the, in the beginning of the, the project, in the beginning of uh, Atlas. Uh, yeah, that, that was the starting point of a, of a new era for us. For the band, yeah. Mm. Um, so when you got that call that you were going to have this amazing singer, what was that like for you? You must have been so excited and very elated to know that you were going to get this um, amazing singer to be on your album that you worked so hard on. Yeah, <laughs> we were shocked. Shocked. <laughs> and uh, I, I still can remember the first time we had a chance to meet him. We, it was very, yeah, exciting and uh, you know, uh, strange at the same time because you, you, for the first time, maybe we 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 met one of our idols. Now we are more or less used to meet a lot of our idols yeah. of, the, <laughs> of the work with Jeff. So yeah, <laughs> it happens often that we are in the backstage at some festivals and we meet guys from Thin Lizzy or Motorhead. So we, we're getting <laughs> used to <laughs> meet our idols. But back then in 2011, uh, the, the first rock star that we when we met was yeah. Jordan Edmund. Yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we we invited in in uh, it was February of that year I remember it was cold it, it was cold there was <laughs> snow in our hometown and uh, um, and we had dinner together and we had a lot of fun yeah, yeah. at the beginning it was uh, a little strange because Goran is a uh, is a Swedish guy so he's pretty serious <laughs> and uh, we were poor kids uh, looking for an autograph probably. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So how do you, you know, stay professional, but still, you're still a fan, right? You, you want the, yeah, exactly. you want the picture, you want the autograph, but now you're also working. Yeah, together. we're not professional. We're still looking for autographs. <laughs> 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 oh, that's wonderful. Now, had you already, you had probably already written the lyrics that he was going to record on that particular, that particular yeah, album, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. Let's, let's talk about the songwriting process at that time. Um, are you the principal songwriters or at the time were you the principal songwriters for the band? Yeah, we um, are. Let's say that we still are the still main are. song okay. in the band. Fuck yeah. the others. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your, I, I always love to know what the songwriting process is for different musicians. How do the two of you work together when you're writing a song? That's yeah, wonderful. It's a wonderful process because uh, uh, probably, uh, probably in, in this room, uh, we can met and um, talk about um, our ideas probably uh, a riff or a chord progression and uh, uh, the face of each other uh, say, says it all. For me, looking at Dario while I'm playing uh, is like uh, applying a filter to my to my ideas. Play, yeah. uh, I already know what, what will work and what will not by looking Dario's face and see his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and the same thing I think probably happens for Darwin. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is the the beginning of a of a song, uh, sharing ideas and filtering each other. And then um, probably uh, the next step is to record some uh, demo of the drum section mm -hmm. and uh, probably programming drums just for having uh, a little demo um, and then the the next step is recording the guitars properly on the on the drum tracks exactly yeah mm -hmm. this is so the uh, yeah the process is uh, sharing ideas uh, a, a drum track uh, guitar tracks probably recorded and then uh, a properly a, a properly recorded drum mm -hmm. and uh, then we send the demo to Goran yeah uh, without the bass and without the solos and without just guitars and drums mm -hmm. and and it's always been like that yeah uh, probably yes from from the very beginning of the new era, uh, this is our uh, routine. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. And then, does he write the lyrics that he's going to sing, or do you write the lyrics together? Um, we we write a lot of the material, a lot of the lyrics, but often Goran uh, writes his own lyrics. Now, uh, yeah, yes, not on the first uh, comeback album, on the first right. album, Growing Apart. Right. But uh, on Melody is a way, and the, the last record we did, Square One, he wrote lyrics. Mm -hmm. yeah. so we we have also a, a different style when it comes to writing lyrics because usually myself and Walter we tend to have a more um, philosophical approach to lyrics, and uh, Joran is more uh, he has Straight more words. Yeah, says forward with uh, his feet on the ground. He has <laughs> more concrete uh, <laughs> problems and. Yeah. yeah. So, that's when the main. You, so if you write a song that's more philosophical, will he take the lyrics and alter them and change them? Or does he leave lyrics that you write alone and then just write his own work? Like, are there two sets of lyrics in your band, the ones that are more philosophical? Sometimes he changes. Yeah. Go ahead. Sometimes he changes beats here and there because yeah. of the of the melody of, of what he needs. Right. Mm -hmm. But usually he may, makes changes for the better. So yeah, yeah, we are very democratic. We are not. Yeah. <laughs> Usually he removes words. It removes words, yeah. Too many words. <laughs> That's amazing. So you had mentioned the new album, Square One. Tell me about the new album. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a real, um, uh, Yes, let, let's say that we are very proud. Yeah, we are, very, <laughs> we are very proud. Today I was uh, running around my house and um, 
uh, doing jogging. And uh, I thought, this is what I was uh, trying to achieve for uh, all my life. This album is really representative of what, uh, what I what I am, what we are. Yeah, it is. And um, it's the first time that happens. Yeah, to me. because maybe the, the, the way we worked also with the other guys, you know, and uh, because usually our albums are snapshots of uh, life, our lives at a certain uh, point in time. Is it correct in English? Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, it, it makes sense. <laughs> But with this one, maybe we achieved something that it's more uh, uh, pleasant uh, musically uh, because we maybe found uh, the right balance with the inputs also that comes from the other guys in the band mm -hmm. and uh, you, you know now, now that we have also a, a new bass player that is a very seasoned player he played for a um, Uh, a band called Elegy. Yeah, a new Euro progressive metal band called Elegy. They've been successful in Japan during the 90s. And uh, he's a guy that has a lot of experience also of the music business. And, um, and uh, we became friends straight away with Martin. He's a very kind and uh, funny guy. Absolutely. And uh, he brought a lot of positive um, vibe. vibe to the mm -hmm. band. So we... And he, he also was another hero for us. For yeah. us of our yeah. <laughs> Basically, our friendship is based on the three bands, Queen's Right, uh, Conception, and Elegy. <laughs> yes, but uh, maybe the last two bands are not very popular in the USA. I don't know if Conception, maybe, because Roy Khan was in Camelot. Okay. Uh, is a, uh, is a band from, uh, Conception is a band from Norway, but the lead... Uh, vocalist of the of, the, uh, of conception uh, joined Camelot, the Florida band during the the, the, the late 90s. The late 90s, yeah. Mm -mm. And uh, well, the wonderful so thing about rock is that you know fans find their bands, right? If if you love a band, <laughs> you find your band. So I'm sure there's somebody watching this is absolutely going to know that band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. And um, so does, every, does everybody in the band um, live in Italy or do people live across uh, across Europe or across the world? Uh, myself, Dario and the uh, drummer Enrico, uh, we live uh, in the same town here in Italy. And uh, Goran is uh, still living in the, um, Sweden, Stockholm, yeah. Stockholm. Mm -hmm. Uh, not really Stockholm. What's the name of uh, the Soderham? Soderham, close Soderham. to close very, to Stockholm. very close to to Stockholm. And Martin, the bus player, is from Netherlands, so okay. he's from Eindhoven, mm -hmm. Eindhoven. So it's so, pretty hard to arrange a rehearsal. I was gonna say <laughs> it was very difficult. Um, in the last few years, maybe it didn't matter as much because everybody's been kind of locked down. So maybe exactly. it didn't matter as much. Um, but in, in Europe in general, if when you're not locked down, um, is traveling mm -hmm. between countries a little bit easier? Like if you get on a train, can you get together for a week or so? Or is it still really challenging? Um, no, it's very really easy. It's, it's really easy very nowadays. easy. It's, it's very dependable on the time. Nowadays, it's easy, but maybe... Uh, a year ago, it wasn't so easy. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But just because of the lockdown, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's very easy today. I think we will have no problems arranging our travels and our rehearsals. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a good thing to uh, be forced to organize everything in advance and uh, be very careful in scheduling all the meetings, all the rehearsals before a tour. Mm -hmm. uh, this means that um, everyone comes well prepared and it's ready for the worst. <laughs> yeah, there's no time to waste. There's no time to waste. Yeah. Very disciplined. So usually before a tour with Atlas, we have a, a week or maybe less, five days, four days of rehearsal, very intense rehearsal, mm -hmm. then we're done. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> that's it. Well, speaking of discipline, um, well, let's jump to the Jeff Tate band. I imagine that you have to do something very similar when you're touring with Jeff Tate because um, I wonder, do you have a lot of opportunity to rehearse with him before you go mm -hmm. on tour with him? Or is it a similar situation where you only have a little bit of time to rehearse with him and the other musicians? Oh, well, he knows, he definitely knows what he wants. Mm -hmm. So he gives you the set list and you, you've got to be prepared. He's a gentleman, he's, a, uh, he's very, he, he really pays attention during rehearsals to every detail. He's a unbelievable musician. He's a, he's a great vocalist, but also uh, he's very deep in everything that he does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but um, at the same time, he's, uh, he, really works, uh, he really works extra hard to make you feel comfortable being there with him. So he, he really believes in the team effort and um, yes, the only thing with Jeff is that you got to be very prepared before the, the meetings. Yeah, of course. Yeah, basically it's the same routine. You have two days probably uh, instead of five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you have to be prepared uh, yeah. very, very well. Um, we have the this, this last yeah. time in Ireland. He uh, didn't show up at rehearsal. Yeah, because he now he believes in us, <laughs> probably. Because <laughs> you played you played with him um, on other tours. This is not definitely yeah. not your first time with him, right? No, 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 no. Is the I think the third tour. We third did. tour, yes. Yeah. We did. We, so uh, we, we, three we did different three different set, set yeah. lists. We did the Operation Minecraft set, the whole Operation Minecraft album. Then we did a, a greatest hits tour. And then we are preparing for the Euro tour for uh, Empire Rage for Order, the mm -hmm. anniversary tour. Right. And how about the, uh, what are, who are the other musicians that you're going to play with when you're touring with Jeff Tate for the 30th anniversary? Are they also, they're also European musicians, I assume. Yes, but some of them, uh, they are already playing with him in the States right now. Okay, so is he bringing some of the, I assume, American musicians with him and then you'll join uh, them in Europe? The drummer is American, and uh, the bass player and, uh, and the other guys are from Scotland. Oh, okay. So it'll be a mixture. Mm -hmm. a mixture. All right. So <laughs> let's let's find out. How did you meet Jeff Tate? How did you become a part of his um, touring band? Yeah, it is a funny story because um, uh, he's been invited uh, to play a couple of festivals in the in the summer of two thousand and eighteen. But the rest of the guys, uh, of you know, sorry, the guys of his band, they were stuck in America and they couldn't join him for the gigs in Europe. Oh. But uh, we share a promoter with him. Uh, it's a promoter that works for Italian shows. And uh, so this promoter called Walter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he knows that I'm a big Prince Rack fan, so. He called me and said, um, would you mind to play some shows with Jeff Tate? And I said, ha ha, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, after a while, I hung up because I, I was trying to uh, realize why he's doing this kind of joke to me. It's, it's, not, it's not funny. <laughs> and then uh, he tried again and tried again and, and, and told me the good news. And so that was really shocking. Yeah, it was really shocking, shocking and for us. It's been an experience that really changed our lives and our career uh, for different reasons. It's not just playing with Jeff, but uh, everything changed. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a so, life. So you got that call because somebody couldn't make it over. You, was it one show that you played this first time, or was it a Two couple shows. of shows? Uh, it was a couple of shows, one in Germany, yeah, and one in Italy. Yeah. Uh, they were big festivals, so uh, can you imagine, I don't know, probably 5,000 people? More, I think more, more. more 10,000. 10, 10, oh, wow. And uh, first show we just <laughs> did, <laughs> the whole Operation Minecraft set, and... 10,000 people in front of you, yeah. it was really 
Oh my god. And he gosh. needed both Shaky. of them. He needed two guitarists. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. And he must have been thrilled too. Like we got two guys, they know all the songs and they're <laughs> ready to get excited to go. <laughs> yeah, it was uh at the beginning, it was uh, very how can I say maybe it was he didn't believe we knew them all he was hesitant. Yeah, he hesitant. Yeah. Yeah. when yeah. we he flew from directly from seattle to rome and we went to the airport and he was there with his uh, wife and he was a little bit nervous about the shows mm -hmm. then he attended the the rehearsals and he discovered that we were really well prepared and so he started to you know, smile a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> and then uh, the, we, we, we became friends. You know, when you when you enter the the whole uh, family of Jeff, it's it's really a family, the, the whole entourage, mm -hmm. the whole uh, people that uh, surround Jeff, you know, so it's uh, he's a very gentleman. He doesn't, you know, you, you have the chance to meet a lot of the people that uh, he appreciates and lives with so mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a big family we had the chance to meet uh, people from seattle people from ireland germany he has friends everywhere of course and uh, some of them are people in the music business some of them are people that uh really works for in in, in other you know um uh, they they do things that are completely different they're very far away from the music business but they you know make wine or whatever uh, selling cars and uh, <laughs> it's a it's a huge family and it's a very strange eclectical international gang we <laughs> met people from brazil and germany yeah, from all over the world, world. Yeah, over the world yeah so um so obviously you made a great impression you know he saw that you really knew the music he loved what you did and then from those two shows, how did you then come to join him again for for, for more shows? Yeah, probably um, it's really convenient for Jeff to have um, some some extra musician here in Europe for the Euro tours. Uh, so he basically, uh, at least in 2018, uh, he had two bands, one for the United States and one for the European shows. And... Uh, he remembered the, the the good shows we had together and uh, simply asked to to join the the new tour so uh, it was a great manifestation of um, uh, um, i don't know probably he's really confident uh, mm -hmm. in what we do mm -hmm. so um, probably he appreciated us a bit mm -hmm. to, to call us again so the, the, the best thing that happened to us um, since the very beginning of this story with Jeff is that um, he realized that we know very well the, the, the Queen's Rex song, not just on our instrument, but, but we have a, an idea uh, of the whole arrangement. So when there's a doubt about a Queen's Rex song during rehearsal or during the uh, the sound check he asked us uh what we did <laughs> in this particular song in this particular moment yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, usually we have the the answer <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love it and you worked with him on his speed oblivion project as well yeah uh, we did a couple of solos on the sweet oblivion project uh and the guitar is mainly played by a guy working for the frontiers records mm -hmm. uh he's a he's a good guitar player it's called um, aldo lonobile mm -hmm. he basically wrote all the songs and um, recorded all the guitars but uh, um at the end uh, Jeff decided to put some of our souls in the in the album, so he decided to to call us again and uh, let us participate in the in the project. I think it's a good album. Yeah. That's really nice. That's nice to hear that you're really part of that that family that he has. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So um, so tell us again about Headless and how we can find um, how we can find your band. 
Um, also, are you going to, you're going to be touring with Jeff um, for the 30th anniversary uh, tour when he comes to Europe, but are you going to be touring with Headless as well? We hope so. Oh, yes, we are searching for gigs. There's a lot of the traffic jam nowadays. Yes, because I can of imagine. The, the <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. very hard to find gigs also because we started writing the album during the pandemic, we recorded the album during the pandemic, we released our first single at the beginning of the pandemic. So a lot of the shows were already scheduled for 2022. Uh, but we are working hard. So I think that we'll succeed at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, we had a good offer for Atlas uh, uh, for uh, the, the April. Month. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the problem is that we are already uh, busy with Jeff in the same period. So um, it's a good problem it's to have, problem. though, right? For, for you guys. <laughs> 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 but well, we you guys have a lot of great videos. So um, we will definitely, I'll share your videos on. Um, on my Instagram yeah. and all of that. And then um, yeah. if you can let everybody know where they can find you to let them know about your website, where they can find all of your videos and um, learn about all of your albums and your merchandise. Yeah, I think everything is uh, on adlessofficial.com, uh, but we can also give them the address for uh, our Facebook page that is adless.italy. And then we have uh, Instagram that is Atlas Metal Band. Metal Band. And uh, there's also a good uh, amount of material about Atlas on the M Theory website. M Theory is the label that released the record, it's an American label based in Vegas. And uh, mtheory.com is the address to visit the, the website. Sounds good. Well, I'll share all of that under this video so people can look under this player to find all of it. Um, but they should, everybody Perfect. should definitely go to their website and check it out. Everything is there. You can learn a lot more about these guys. Um, definitely <laughs> uh, follow them, check out all of their videos. They have some great videos. Um, buy their albums, check out their merch. Um, follow them on all their socials. Um, their Instagrams are new, so definitely check out their Facebook, their websites, their band um, videos and all that. Um, and to follow me, subscribe to this channel, share this interview with all of your friends, <laughs> and most importantly, leave a really nice comment for Walter, Dario, and myself. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. It was a pleasure to meet both of you, and um, I'm excited for, for everything you guys are doing. Thank you so much. much. Thank you so we much. We hope to see you once again. Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely come yeah. back on um, as you do more stuff and as you uh, do more tour dates. Absolutely. Thank you so much Thank for having so us, much. Sarah. Thank you for watching this conversation with Walter Chinchuse and Dario Parente. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and leave a nice comment for me, Walter, and Dario. And also remember to subscribe to this channel if you already haven't, and to also share this interview as well as any others on this channel that you've enjoyed with your friends and family and spread the word about MetalNet TV. Remember, I have an interview every single week for you, so make sure you come back. You can hit that little notification bell, which will remind you whenever a new video is posted. So I will see you soon. Take care and have a great week.